Hi, Pastor Lindsay. Hi. I'm happy you're with us today. You're the Thanks pastor for having me. All People's Gathering at Second and Clark in Milwaukee. But I wondered if you'd tell us a little more about who you are. How would you define and describe yourself? Uh, my name is Lindsay. I use pronouns like she, her. Um, I am uh, a, a weirdo who God called. And I think it's super cool. Um, because uh, it was never something that was on my radar as a kid, like in a million years. Um, and somehow through the twists and turns, um, I was called to this work and I get to serve the people of all peoples at the moment. And they're just lovely um, doing hard work over there. And uh, also married to my wonderful spouse, Brady. And we have a dog who may or may not appear in this, um, who is uh, pretty much our child at this point. Um, and yeah, I love all things silly and childlike. I mean, I have a squishmallow in the background. So, you know, it's not really that shocking. Like give me glitter and bubbles and I'm a happy camper. <laughs> When I think about you, one of the things I think is that you're an artist. I do. I love to create. Yeah, you make beautiful things. So mm -hmm. this conversation is part of a little group of conversations. We notice that most of the people serving churches in our area in urban Milwaukee are not male. And so as we celebrate Women's History Month, we, well, I <laughs> wanted to ask you guys some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thing I'm wondering is who stands out along your journey as someone who encouraged you in your call to ministry? So I think there's been a lot of ways that that's happened. Um, but one person in particular um, is my great aunt, um, Auntie D. She was, uh, she grew up Lutheran, but then married uh, a Catholic and so became Catholic and then was the best darn Catholic there ever was. Um, and uh, she, in some ways, is just like an idol of a human. Um, she was always super generous and gracious. Um a thoughtful and compassionate, like willing to show up for people as, as much as humanly possible long past of times when other people would have probably thought it humanly possible. She somehow managed. Um, and I remember I took my first, uh, big kid job doing youth ministry in St. Paul and, um, she lived in St. Paul as well. So I would pop over and say, Hey, to her, um, and uh, we talk, we just talk about faith and we talk about life. And um, when her best friend, she was her uh, maid of honor in her wedding, passed away. And uh, she was so sad. And I brought anointing oil over and, and so we prayed together. And she was the one that said, now you're going to be a pastor. Like, I know it. Wow. Um, and uh, and how powerful it was to have someone who was my elder, um, that I loved so much to say, like, this is who you are. And I feel like when it comes from somebody older too, like getting emotional, she just passed away two years ago, but, um, when it comes from somebody older that I saw as much wiser than me, um, it was, so powerful and such a gift uh and she was always forever along the seminary journal journey and all of the times i was like i'm quitting this is the worst <laughs> uh, she, she was always the person who was cheerleading me and um sending me notes and like the most proud human in the whole world and um i have she gave me a little angel statue um that was hers uh when I was in seminary because she wanted me to have guardian angels with me so she's just the best she sounds really special yeah she really is <laughs> I was in seminary one of our teachers would ask us who ordains you that she was the family systems teacher so that was like one uh, of <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so it was especially fitting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it sounds like um, that's she who did. ordained you. Mm -hmm. that's cool. Absolutely. And, um, and when I saw what I did as like a lesser version of ministry, like I still very much saw like, okay, I'm a youth minister, but that's not like the real thing. Right. Yeah. And she was the person that was very much like, oh no, <laughs> that's the real thing. I've seen you around a hundred children and that's the real thing. Um, that's really great. And it's important, especially this mm -hmm. month you know, talking about people who yeah. are serving in the kingdom of God, like that is so important, especially because historically and still in other denominations, women can't have those right specific spaces of. And I'm convinced leadership. that had she been in a different time and in a different denomination, um, that she would have been like yeah. she profoundly faithful. Um, and like half of her best friends were nuns. Like it's just also. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. So she was a, you know, functionally, she was like a troublemaking nun at her heart, which was beautiful. <laughs> the best ladies, the best people. Right. <laughs> so the other thing I want to ask you is how does, how do you perceive your gender impacting your leadership? I think um, for me, it's taken me a really long time to embrace it as a positive but um the gift of softness um is something that part of it is of course like culturally placed in me and in emphasized in me um and i think some of it is just my own disposition like i'm quick to tears i'm a squishy kind of emotional empathy type of human <laughs> um but that for a very long time, I saw that as a detriment, as like the thing that held me back from being the best leader or um, from being like aggressive and assertive for certain jobs or whatever. Um, and it's it's only in the last few years that I've really started to accept that that's part of my superpower, um, that I that my ability to be gentle and um and squishy <laughs> in a lot of ways is part of what um makes me safe for some folks for whom uh the collar has been a power over kind mm -hmm. of thing um it was really important to me that that's not like I'm very uncomfortable with the way that the clerics and that position has been used as authority over people historically mm -hmm. um and my squishiness I feel like is one of the ways that I I try and protect mm -hmm. that role or the sacredness of that role without letting it become um a power over mm -hmm. um and I think it becomes then an entry point that says like God is using me as I am right now <laughs> like not a different version of me not if I'm more like a male CEO and not if I have to be something other than me that God is calling me um very much a girl who loves glitter and silly girl things sometimes and loves like will fight tooth and nail um for equity and inclusion um and that that's a gift that that's not a hindrance to my call, that that is a gift that I offer to, to community, to church, to um, especially little girls in my congregation. Um, and it's so fun to watch them kind of step into their own version of that. Um, I'm glad to hear you say that because you're my friend and it makes me happy to hear you embrace who you are. And I also appreciate, I heard you say it helps people feel safe. And I think that's a really important aspect of being a pastor. And I was thinking about people, you mentioned when people have been harmed by the pastoral authority figure, but also people who haven't been harmed by the pastoral authority figure, but just have some really heavy stuff that is hard for them to carry by themselves. To have a person who helps them feel safe 
is huge, right? Like, I just think that's a really important thing that you offer to the world and then also as a pastor. So I'm glad that you notice that in yourself that, as a strength because not everyone has that. It's not easy for everyone. And it, it seems isn't. Like it's natural. It's, it's not my favorite thing some days. <laughs> like, it is not convenient always to be a person that feels big feels. Um, and, but it has also allowed me to say that these feelings are holy. Like there's nothing wrong with having the feelings. Um, and that, that means that, um, like, especially, well, everybody in a different way, the way that gender, um, constructs what feelings are appropriate for us to feel and not right. You know, being able to say to, um, to the little girls in my community, like you get to be angry yeah. and you get to be, um, you get to name when you're hurt and you get to have a boundary, right? Like you get to have those feelings that are bad feelings. And to say that the little boy is like, it is okay that you are sad. It yeah. is okay that you're crying, um, that God cries with you, right? Like that, that these feelings aren't somehow for one group of people and not for the other. Um, and that we're better humans when we can do all of those emotions. Um, and, and when we listen to those, cause I really do think that our emotions are in some ways like a God meter in us, um, that God is trying to tell us something, um, or help us see something. And if we can actually listen to it versus like squishing it into a little box and putting it on a shelf, um, I think it, it opens up opportunities for us to be near to God and to our neighbor. I've never thought about it like that, but I'm going to now. What a cool idea. So I have a little bonus question that I'm asking everyone. Bonus. <laughs> I didn't talk to you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, March is our month. So yeah. I want to know what's one way that you intend to care for yourself or do something nice for you this month as we celebrate being women, I guess, in the church, in this mm -hmm. context, but just in the world. Right. Just in general, in the world. Um, so I, um, I'm a big positive affirmations fan and partly because I'm super skeptical, <laughs> which the like glitter rainbow side of me doesn't seem like, but I actually am like highly suspicious of most things. Um, and as annoying as it is to me that like the the fake it till you'll make it or think it and eventually you believe it kind of thing actually works. Um, and so it is not infrequent that I will um, write messages on my mirror so that I am kind of forced to say those out loud each morning or each time I'm in the bathroom. And so I think... Um, this month, I think that I'm I'm really going to focus on um, what is is in me, um, what is the created me, um, being powerful and um, being being necessary for the world. Um, not an extra, not a bonus, not if there's time or space, but is a necessity, and that's why. So I'm going to find some, some quotes, some sentences that uh, when I may be feeling a little less than powerful, um, I can read and remember yeah. that they're true. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been a great chat mm -hmm. and we'll continue next time with some other person in our little cohort of pastors. How neat that there are so many of us. <laughs> Thanks, Dave, the lady.